will discuss in detail about to discrete random variable so one scenario we had already discussed during uh, elementary probability that there are two kind of uh, probability one we are calling it a discrete probability another we are calling it continuous probability so that uh, classification depends on sample space so if your sample space omega happens to be discrete a discrete set then that leads toward uh, a discrete probability so we had already discussed now situation is here different we are not looking just uh, uh, sample space apart from that we try to define a mapping uh, mapping from sample space to real number so uh, <coughs> A discrete and probability and continuous probability that would be totally different from uh, here uh, discrete random variable and continuous random variable that approach we will see it here so everyone uh, is aware of what is discrete and what is continuous uh, i had already taken one class over that and uh, i think uh, i had already discussed over what is discrete and what is continuous so just again you can recall it that uh, yes it it would be discrete if uh, you are uh, you are having uh, members in that set in such a way uh, you can find for each with respect to each member you can find a neighborhood that if ne challenge neighborhood that won't contain any member of the set uh, except the point uh, around which we have taken the if neighborhood so it is uh, like set of natural number if you take <coughs> set of natural numbers set of real number all uh, set of natural number set of integers uh, like natural number you start with one two three four five it will go on so always we can find a neighborhood around one which here never you can call it n epsilon of one each it uh, won't connect it is natural number we are taking we are denoting by n so if you take intersection with the set of natural number then intersection is just a singleton set one containing one that means it is not containing any natural number other than one itself so there exists one epsilon neighborhood likewise if you uh, take two then around two again you can get an epsilon neighborhood of two that would contains uh, only two from the set n okay it is not containing other than two so that's why two is uh, all is uh, here we see that uh, we are getting a discrete uh, environment like uh, a limit points happens to be here uh, empty no point is a limit point that concept we can see it like this way uh, likewise if you go to talk about integer uh, same situation but if you go to talk about rational rational is countable very fine there is no issue because there is a bijection from set of rational to set set of integer it is a countable but apart from that it is having a very interesting result that uh, rational function is satisfying density property that means if you are taking any two rational number a and b then always there exists a rational number between these two rational number always there exists so that we are calling it density theorem so rational number is dense in itself or dense in r also you can say dense in r that means if you take any real number that would be limit point of this rational set of rational number so density theorem so rational number set of rational number is not discrete it is countable but it is not discrete but integers and uh, any finite set or natural number all these are discrete set discrete set and uh, so there would be two criteria discrete set and non discrete set that means discrete set and continuous set simply i would like to say that a real number happens to be any subset of real number real number if you take like an interval that happens to be a continuous set so that will that would lead to classification of a uh, continuous random variable and uh, if uh, that uh, so two scenario is coming that we had already seen that if we are having a, a random variable then it happens to be a map from a sample space omega sample space of an experiment uh, that happens to omega to r so it is a map a random in this this is the definition of a random variable now uh, once we are having definition of random variable we can further classify on the nature of range of the uh, random variable so if range this happens to be uh, how we define range we define it is a image of all omega every outcome so, so that 
um, this small omega coming from sample of this capital omega it is what we are calling it image or range of the corresponding random variable if it is discrete if it is discrete if it is discrete set then corresponding random variable we will call it a discrete random variable and if it is continuous then corresponding random variable we will call it a continuous random variable so that is the difference if it is discrete and another that if this range of the random variable happens to be uh, is continuous then we say that the corresponding random variable is continuous it is discrete if it is discrete it implies uh, x is discrete x is discrete random variable if this one is continuous suppose it's continuous implies x is a continuous random variable continuous random variable so example uh, in last lecture you had already seen the example like uh, you toss three coins uh, uh, or toss a coin thrice even uh, toss a coin thrice three times And there, in this experiment, you define uh, a random variable like this way, counting number of heads. Number of heads. So, what are the possible value of x? Anyone? Anyone? What are the possible value of x? Anyone just tell me what are the possible value of x? Am I audible? I am saying x is counting number of heads in uh, toss when you toss a coin three times. What are the possible value of x? There are only three possible either 0 or 1 or 2. <coughs> These are the possible uh, or 3. So simply, if I ask, what is the range of x? What is range? Only these four possible values will come. 0, 1, 2, 3. So you can easily see that uh, here this range is a, it is a discrete set. It is a discrete set. Then corresponding uh, random variable, we will call it discrete random variable. Any example of continuous random variable? Any example? No. Okay, and then we will discuss that later. So here, uh, let me discuss first uh, discrete random variable and the distribution of the discrete random variable we will denote it by uh, a law that we will uh, we will call it probability mass function. So coming coming to that uh, discrete random variable first what does it so i will take few example as i had already mentioned that uh, discrete random variable happens to be a, a function from sample space omega to r in such a way the range is uh, that omega x happens to be a discrete set only definition mathematically if you want uh, range must be a discrete set here we never focus on uh, uh, omega that sample space sample space here it may be discrete it may be continuous but uh, based on that we are not uh, categorizing a random variable discrete we are categorizing a random variable discrete based on the range of the uh, random variable if range is discrete then we will say the corresponding random variable would be discrete otherwise uh, not okay so we are taking an experiment like uh, of toss in a coin five times that five process of a coin then uh, simply if you talk about the uh, outcome of uh, this experiment that five tosses of a coin then each outcome would be a five tuple five tuple of heads and tail then simply if i ask uh, what are the number of possible outcomes so easily from the law of uh, 
that the principle of counting you can easily come up with that idea so there are five boxes each box uh, you can fill up with uh, uh, two way likewise to, two to the power five option would be there or to, that means two to the power five outcomes would be there in this in this experiment then the quantification approach that uh, random variable we can define it like this way in this uh, experiment we can define various random variables so what are those so was uh, just we are trying to define few of them few of those quantification one we are defining the number of heads in the sequence so that we call it suppose we are calling it x x is talking about number of heads in the sequence so tell me what are the value of x what so simply focus on the what would be the range of uh, this x with respect to if you are defining uh, x happens to be uh, it is a definitely it is a mapping from sample space uh, omega to r then uh, uh, x is talking counting number of heads in the sequence of five tuple uh, with heads and tail then what what is the range of uh, this x anyone okay. 0 to 5 so here call it 0 1 explicitly it is a finite range is it is a finite state so we can uh, ex uh, explicitly write those all value of x so each uh, each small uh, its value of this one we can re represent by a small letter x corresponding okay so like x equal to 0 or x equal to 1 or x equal to 2 or x equal to 3 or x equal to 4 x equal to 5 that category x equal to 0 is one value one observation of this x x equal to 1 is another observation of this x likewise okay so here x is a proper random variable and it is discrete random variable because the this set is a discrete set so it is a discrete random variable okay now we are defining another one uh, another that it is calling one tuple of heads uh, head tail uh, why we are calling it one tuple one tuple of heads and tail so does it a uh, random variable this one it is why is talking of one five tuple of heads and tail one five tuple of heads and tail so clearly if you talk about this uh, as a random variable it is not a random variable because here uh, this y is having only one pre image it is defined with respect to uh, five a single five tuple all outcomes are not coming so it is not a legitimate uh, way to define random variable now we are taking another scenario another quantification that we are counting four five tuple of heads and tail then tell me whether it would call it z then this z which is counting uh, any four five tuple of heads so does it have again a random variable anyone this one is talking about four five tuple of heads and tail so tell me whether this z is a, is a random variable or not this quantification approach is yes anyone anyone Try to answer it whether it is right or wrong, just uh, you can answer in that way. Whether z is a uh, random variable or not. Simply it is not a random variable because it is dealing with just four uh, uh, outcomes, four outcomes of the experiment. So that's why it is not a random variable. While the outcome, there are how many outcomes to the power five outcomes are there? You can. Okay, like if you come up with uh, uh, this idea that uh, five tuple with first head five tuple with first head again there could be issue five tuple with first head it won't include every outcome that means it won't engage every outcome of the experiment so it would be also not in uh, what we call it a random variable so all these are uh, defining from the district fashion we are taking another example uh, of rolling a die twice a dice twice so we define further quantification so one quantification is talking about the sum of the two rolls is uh, sum of the two rolls so tell me whether it is a this call it again i am calling it x so sum of two rolls uh, what are the possible value of x then here x is talking about sum of the two rolls so what are the possible value of x anyone so one to twelve so 1 to 12 or 2 to 12 2 to 12 so 2 3 4 5 it will go up to and it engage all the 
outcome of the experiment so that's why it is a legitimate uh, random variable and further we see the range of that it happens to be discrete finite and hence it is a discrete set so we can say that this x uh, sum of two rows uh, that one is talking about a discrete random variable now if uh, we are defining another random variable another variable later we will call so the number of six sixes in two rows so uh, call it y number of sixes in two rows so tell me why is a random variable or not and what are the uh, value y is observing that means uh, what value are coming in the range of y anyone what are the whether this one is the number of sixes in two rows uh, whether it is a legitimate random variable or not first question now second question is that uh, what is the if it is a uh, legitimate random variable then what is the range of this one so that we can verify that whether it is a discrete random variable or not so tell me whether it is a discrete it is a uh, 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 random variable or not first so it is just uh, focusing on the number of sixes so it is a legitimate uh, random variable and range would be either if you take any outcomes uh, total if you are rolling uh, a dice twice then total 36 outcome would be there in those 36 outcome you have to look for uh, sixes whether sixes are there now. so what is the what is the minimum number of sixes that you will see in an outcome that would be zero and uh, maximum what would be what maximum would be two so it is definitely uh, this is a legitimate uh, this one is a legitimate uh, random variable and with this range so again we can say that y is a discrete random variable you can see a lot of here right now if you are so simple you have already seen that your sample space if it happens to be a discrete uh, set then by default the corresponding random variable could be a discrete random variable but what will happen that if your sample space is continuous then that time also you can define discrete random variable over a continuous sample space that scenario will come come later so there are various other uh, example i have taken it here i will share this okay so i am taking few more <coughs> example of discrete random variable where sample space would be <coughs> continuous in nature and despite of that but uh, smartly we are defining in such a way such a way by percussion way or some kind of tri trichotomy principle or some other principle we will apply it here so like one situation is coming like this way uh, so consider an experiment of uh, uh, selecting a number from the interval minus one to one at random then we can define a discrete random variable like this way we are selecting number like this way so like if you are selecting an omega omega it is a number from minus one to one interval minus one to one so uh, there we associate a map from here to r call it r like this way so omega take uh, here x of omega would be uh, but either it would be if uh, omega happens to be less than zero then x of omega would be uh, sine simply call it sine sine function here uh, this uh, uh, map x from minus 1 to 1 you are defining minus 4 interval minus 1 to 1 to real number you are defining through sine function sine you are calling it sine so if you are taking a select you are, if you are selecting a, a negative real number from this interval that will map to minus 1 negative sign that negative sign if you are taking a real number zero then that would have zero that would map to zero and if you are selecting a positive real number from the interval minus one to one that will map to that will have a positive sign that means plus one that will map to plus one so easily we can say that here what is the range of this uh, sample uh, this uh, random variable what is range? anyone you can see that here range is minus one zero one so range is containing just three elements that means it is a discrete set uh, discrete set so we can say that uh, this map from minus interval interval minus one to one to r it is a discrete random variable because why because here the corresponding <coughs> range is 
discrete set that's why it is a discrete random variable easily we can say, we can say that but uh, this here experiment is that uh, you are choosing uh, points numbers from the interval minus 1 to 1 so we can say that the sample space it, it is a continuous set it is a continuous set but the uh, random variable what we have defined in this fashion through sign approach it happens to be a discrete random variable so with that we are having an example with continuous sample space but the random variable is discrete in nature so we can come up with such kind of idea there are a few more examples so if you even if you are cho uh, choosing a point from uh, real number itself at random then we can also over the real number uh, real number by taking as a sample space we can define uh, discrete random variable like this way uh, that uh, there is there are various approach to define so one simplest approach that uh, that means non positive real number will map to one and positive real number will map to zero so this one is just uh, one it is taking here a range of uh, x is just having two only two element zero and one bifurcation approach what i would like to say that so this one here again here if you talk about if i'm asking what is uh, omega so x is a mapping again from uh, omega to r and omega is a set of real number complete r here omega is complete r that means uh, your sample space is experiment is that you are selecting a number uh, from uh, real number you are taking a uh, choosing any point from real number so that's where uh, a sample space would be complete real number and over that we are defining a quantification approach that uh, we map positive real number to zero and uh, non-negative non-positive real number to one so that's where this x is a discrete random variable likewise uh, various other random variable discrete random variable you can define it uh, in the similar fashion so again we we are taking a random experiment it is very much generalization what we call it characterization function so it is coming this random variable is coming with respect to characterization function and uh, it will play a very important role uh, uh, in bernoulli kind of random variable so the bernoulli random variable generally happen, happens in this category so how we define in this way so we come up with any sample space any sample space we don't know whether this that sample space is discrete or continuous so just come up with any simple space and what we do uh, define the random variable as a characterization function of the sample space what does it say characterization function it says that uh, um, it is defined like this way if you are taking any member from that that set then characterization function map that uh, member to one and if you are taking any member outside that set then characterization function maps that member to zero that means that uh, uh, any member which is simply it say that the characterization function just characterize the member of the <coughs> set itself it is not worrying about other things that with respect to other uh, member which are not in uh, omega that who, that one is uh, vanished that one is vanished simply say. so that perspective is coming so if you are defining a random uh, variable through this characterization function of a sample space then this one is always a discrete random variable uh, irrespective of uh, nature of uh, this uh, sample space so always you are getting such scenario discrete scenario so all these were example of a discrete random variable now uh, if you are having a discrete random variable then we will introduce a one uh, law probability measure that means simply uh, when you talk about a discrete uh, uh, random variable that means simply your uh, range of the discrete random variable happens to be a discrete set so you can observe you can easily observe points of those things these are the point so you can call these are the point mass also you can uh, uh, related to with these are the point mass so if, with respect to each point mass if uh, x is observing this value this number of value so simply uh, this number of value with uh, what probability with what probability so each point or uh, uh, each point is having uh, probability 
some protein that protein we will call it protein mass function so each mass is having protein simply we can say that here it always first thing is that discrete state happens to be countable second thing is that uh, easily we can see discreetly in discrete fashion we can see those points so that means if you take any small level around that point there would be there would be no other observed value of x there would be no uh, other observed value of x that's why so point point wise easily we can uh, visualize those uh, those uh, observed value of x so if uh, we are visualizing those as a point mass then each point mass is having a probability what is that probability and so in that process uh, we are getting a distribution of probability that we will call it probability mass function that uh, probability of each mass simply i would like to probability of each mass probability of observing each uh, 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 value of x so that will lead to our probability mass function so we are going to define it like this way uh, so the most important way to characterize a random variable is through the probabilities of uh, observed value of x that it take that uh, observed value uh, is taken by the corresponding random variable discrete random variable x okay so uh, we can say that there is a pattern of occurrence of the various observed or measured value of the variable and we call uh, that pattern the pattern what we observe pattern of occurrence that we are calling it the distribution of the random variable there is a distribution of the random variable okay so for a discrete random variable the pattern are actually totally captured by probability mass function in short we are calling it probability pmf in short and we denote it by uh, a small p suffix x a small p suffix x remember that notation is very much important now then a small p suffix x it would be a function from where to where it would be a function because it is coming with respect to age uh, observed value of x so by default a domain of this uh, probability mass function would be a range of the corresponding random variable and what would be codomain it go up to uh, r but actually we if you talk about range of this probability mass function it would be uh, close interval 0 to 1 range would be close interval 0 to 1 that we will see it here so here uh, if x is any possible or simply observed value either you call it possible value observed value of, or observed value of x then the probability mass of x will denote it by uh, p of x you can uh, put uh, this one silent uh, because this x is just coming in order to reflect that we are defining probability mass function for the random variable x so only for that uh, case it is coming so so the probability mass of each x we denote it by p of x and we read it like the, that uh, probability of the event x is observing value the random variable x this capital uh, a random variable always be denoted by capital letter uh, so p of x it happens it, it is defined as a probability of the event that random variable x is observing value a, a one value a small x a small x is a one particular value and uh, if you try to calculate this probability so you have to look back into sample space that means what are the outcome which has mapped to uh, this particular x in order to get uh, um, define that in the process of defining the random variable so in th this one is a little bit indirect process that if you are willing to calculate this value p of x you have to look to outcomes which are in there sample space that pre images you have to look uh, pre images of so simply you can define uh, this one is the outcome that from the perspective of observation of the value of x so this you can define in the equivalent our uh, outcome uh, like this way e equivalent event like this way so this one is equivalent to uh, it is talking about collection of all outcome which has been mapped to small x under the random variable uh, capital x which has been so this this is the outcome so it is completely where it is an out event in sample space because it is containing some possible outcome so that's where it is an event so it would be in the sample space so if you are willing to find probability of this one probability of this one would be equal to probability of this uh, event okay probability of this event so you can simply say that uh, if uh, here uh, non word we, uh, we will have different way to denote a uh, event so we can denote event like this way this is the new approach to define event of uh, in a random experiment so here i have already explained it all these 
further so if you are willing to find protein value of protein mass function at point x then it, it is defined by remember that it just give attention to so this protein value of protein mass function uh, at x it is defined as a probability this capital p is talking about probability a small p is talking about protein mass function with suffix x and capital p this one is simply talking about probability of the event x and the event that random variable x is observing value x so this one the right hand side thing is known to us x is talking about notation of uh, random variable okay and uh, uh, this uh, this probability is equal to find the probability of the pre image of uh, a capital x equal to x so this is the pre image so this we are calling it pre image of this one you can call it so this probability is, uh, this one looks a little bit indirect approach to come up with uh, value of probability mass function at x okay just one example we will take uh, here uh, things would be very much clear then we will go to generalize it further so consider a uh, four tosses of a coin that means uh, we are tossing a coin uh, four times okay then question is coming that we have to find the probability mass function for the random variable that would be defined as number of heads in the four tosses so here call it x x is the number of headed in this four tosses of a coin so what simply look into sample space what are the possible sample space this would be sample space you can count number of outcomes in this sample space what are those that means we are having four box and each box can be filled with two options and product rule apply here so to the power four to the power four is 16 you can calculate you can match all those outcomes there are 16 outcomes in the sample space uh, of this experiment that means when you're tossing a coin four times now there we are defining random variable x as a number of heads in these four tosses so by default the uh, <coughs> in these four tosses there would be these possible value of x either x will take zero that means zero head or one head or two head or three head or four head so we are counting just number of heads so so these are the possible observation of x you can call it these are the possible observed value of x so uh, if you are having this possible observed value of x with respect to each observed value of x we will find the probability value of protein mass function so let us calculate value of protein mass function as i mentioned that uh, protein mass function it would be a map from a range of uh, random variable to r so that's why we need to calculate uh, what are what are the value of uh, uh, here uh, falls in in this range so there are only four value five value those are zero one two three and four these are the five value so uh, let us calculate uh, value of protein mass function for x equal to zero so how we will define so this would be defined as a, a as a probability that random variable x is observing value zero and if you're talking uh, random variable x is observing value zero that means zero means uh, no head zero head zero head and zero head means it is uh, what is pre image of that pre image of that is this outcome in the sample space tail 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 and tail that means probability of x is observing value zero is equal to probability of uh, this uh, tail 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 okay now if we try to look into find the probability of this outcome how this outcome is coming so among these 16 outcome each outcome happens to be equally likely so probability of a single outcome would be 1 by 16 so from the uniform principle easily we, we will get probability of ttt and hence we will say that actually this 1 by 16 is also probability of x is observable 0 and hence we can say that 1 by 16 is actually value of the uh, probability mass function at x equals to 0 okay so that uh, we can get it through in, in this way okay now so if you are willing to calculate protein value of protein mass function at x equal to 1 then through the definition you will see that this uh, value of protein uh, mass function at x equal to 1 it is defined as, as a probability that x is observing value 1 then 1 is talking about that uh, that means single head there is a single head okay then uh, there is a single head then if you try to look into outcome what are those outcomes which are having single head so you can see it here like this way uh, here uh, these 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 are the outcomes which are having single head so there are four outcomes so that means four 
choose one concept will come four choose one and if you try to see each outcome is having probability one by 16 so four choose one one by 16 that will four by uh, 16 that uh, that means simply you are saying that uh, one by 16 you have added four times and, and hence you are getting, getting four by 16 as a value of probability mass function at x equal to one likewise if we are uh, willing to calculate the value of probability mass function function at x equal to 2 it would be defined as probability that x is observing value 2 and 2 is talking about two heads so uh, how many outcomes which we which are having exactly two heads so we can observe that uh, these outcomes are having two heads these are two heads. you can write it it is mapped to two <coughs> it is mapped to two <coughs> it is mapped to two this one is also mapped to two. So there are four possibilities, four outcomes. That's where uh, the value of uh, probability mass function at two would be equal to one by 16, how many times? Four times. So that way four by 16 would come here. So that is the value of probability mass function at x equal to two. Likewise, value of probability mass function at x equal to three would be uh, uh, four by 16. And uh, uh, value of probability mass function at x equal to three, it would be uh, one by 16. Uh, so all these are the possible value of uh, Value of x equal value of probability mass function at x equal to 4, it would be 1 by 16. Value of value of probability mass function at x equal to 3, it would be 4 by 16. And value of probability mass function at x equal to 2, it would be 6 by 16. So these are the possible value. So if you uh, are willing to make a tabular form of uh, corresponding uh, observed value of x and the correspond associated probability, then you can write it like this way. So this one is the tabular form of representation of distribution. So just in the first row, take value of x. So x is observing 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So these are the possible value of x. Then in the second row, you can write value of uh, probability mass function. So you can see that if uh, x uh, below probability mass function at x equal to 0, it is uh, 1 by 16. So you can write it like 1 by 16. Value probability mass function at, at x equal to 1, it is 4 by 16. So you can write it 4 by 16. Value probability mass function, uh, function at x equal to 2, it is 6 by 16. So you can write it 6 by 16. Value of probability mass function at x equal to 3, it is 4 by 16. And the value of probability mass function at x equal to 4, it is 1 by 16. So th this is the distribution. We can say that x is having probability 1 by 16, 1 is having probability, 0 is having probability 1 by 16, 1 is having probability 1, 4 by 16, 2 is having probability 6 by uh, 16, and 3 is having probability 4 by 16, 4 is having probability 1 by 16. So we are getting a distribution of x. So uh, distribution of simply we are calling it distribution of x. So each value is occurring with different probability. Okay. So that's why we are having probability mass function, and that probability mass uh, we that probability distribution we are getting it through probability mass function. What is the so we can just uh, single out few properties of probability mass function. What are those properties? Uh, so the property you can easily visualize those property that uh, for each possible value of or observed value of x. Uh, we collect all the possible outcome that give rise to the event x uh, that uh, x equal to small x okay that means simply we are finding the pre image uh, we call it omega such that uh, all those outcome omega which has been mapped to small x that observed value x we are trying to look for that okay so then what we do so once we are having idea of this uh, collection of all outcome uh, that means pre-image of uh, uh, this x uh, small x then we have to add the probability of all those outcome in order to obtain the value of protein mass function, uh, function at x so how and how will so that's why we are saying that value of protein mass function, uh, function at x is equal to probability of all these outcome that means we are each outcome is having different probability uh, mutually exclusive to other outcomes so that's where it's just summation rule will come here and easily we can uh, by adding up we will get the probability of, of pro value of probability mass function at x okay so here uh, 
all the events if you talk about with respect to random variable discrete random variable it can be expressed as union of a cage then what is a cage a cage it is talking about uh, likewise uh, here uh, we call it this uh, pre image a cage as pre image of uh, xk pre image of xk so simply here uh, what we are talking about that uh, that uh, range of in case of discrete random variable range it is a discrete set so so discrete set easily we can talk about quantification of the uh, or we call we can say that we can uh, put the element of, of uh, this range of x in a sequence we can put in a sequence uh, as a range of sequence a single sequence a single range of single sequence we can put it like k will vary from uh, one to some finite number or infinite number it may go so simply as there is a single sequence so with respect to each xk we can define the corresponding pre image ak what would be ak ak would be here it is a collection of all outcome in the sample space which has mapped to small xk which has been mapped to small xk a small x k a small letter denote one a specific object value or particle value so that's where so a k r, r actually happens to be uh, within uh, <clears throat> within sample space so in that process we can talk about the partition of this uh, discrete random variable due to the definition in it introduced partition in the sample space it is you can see that we are taking a k and you are taking a j and ak is a uh, ak is another uh, xk is another member and xj is another member with respect to uh, xk we will get a event collection of outcome in the uh, sample space like ak and with respect to xj we will get aj and here simply we can see that there is a no there is a no common element between ak and aj both are so simply we can say that both are disjoint to each other so there is no common element between so that's why uh, that uh, discrete random variable also brings partition of the sample space that i will discuss it here like this way you can see it here so just uh, uh, for the sake of simplicity i am taking event containing only two observed value of x x2 and x5 so with respect to x2 what is the pre image of that so pre image of x2 is a2 and pre image of x5 is uh, pre image of x5 is a5 i can denote it pre image of x5 is we can write it like this way a5 and likewise pre image of x3 is a3 pre image of x3 is a3 so so if you are willing to calculate probability of uh, <coughs> all those x which are coming from uh, this event b then we have to look for here that means x would be here in place of x3 actually it would be x5 it would be x3 actually x3 i have taken it so here probability would be that uh, uh, it is the pre all the pre images of x2 and x3 so simply it will be bifurcated into as a union of uh, pre images of x2 and pre images of x3 and how we denote pre images of x2 we denote by a2 and pre images of x3 we denote by a3 that's why we further know that uh, here a2 and a3 are mutually disjoint there is no common thing that's why other, otherwise uh, it will uh, just uh, uh, create problem for definition uh, for x being a random variable x is a map so due to this mapping nature of x a2 would be uh, disjoint with respect to a3 and if it is disjoint simply we are applying additive property and through that we are adding property of a2 and a3 and uh, property of a2 is just what value of the property mass function at x2 and property of a3 is just for what it is value of probability mass function at x3 and we are summing and, and, and hence we are getting probability of this event having only two observed value x2 and x3 so it is totally indirect process what we see here so through that we can talk about the probability mass function satisfies three properties that provide all the information required to calculate probability of 
event involving discrete random variables so what are those properties those property we will call it uh, first property it say that uh, property mass function if you focus on that it is taking value between 0 and 1 it is taking value 0 and 1 you can see that always it that means range of the property mass function always it would be open interval uh, close interval 0 1 okay and second property it say that uh, if you sum up all the value of property mass function then that would satisfy normalizing condition it is, so sum for all x summation is here over with respect to x summation is with respect to x that, that means summing all the value of the property mass function then sum happens to be equal to 1 okay and third property is talking about uh, probability of finding events that, like uh, such kind of event event that means you are coming with uh, a few observed value of x call it b b simply it, it is a subset of oh, a range of <coughs> sigma x. so omega x range, range of omega x then we can easily find probability of b how we can find we are summing the protein mass function for all x which are coming from b so we are summing the protein mass function here over b only we are, we are not having complete information we are summing over b so this is third rule uh, third uh, uh, rule that a protein mass function is satisfying so all if you are coming with a protein mass function have to satisfy these three rules one two three all three so rule must be satisfied by a protein mass function so okay it is already above 45 minutes so other thing will